On this episode of Doing the Most, we are releasing our recipe for the Ozark Howler, a brew in a bag, braggot. Moment brews and various artists, everything from meat to roast. Big creation, fermentation, and ebriation, doing the most. There are a lot of different ways you can incorporate adding honey to a beer. You can use it in the fermentation process. You can use it for priming bottles. You can even make a mead and make a beer and then blend them into something that you like. In this recipe, we're going to be using honey at flame out. That's when we cut the flame after our boil. The honey goes in while everything's still kind of screaming hot, so it mixes throughout really well. We have other videos on the channel for beginner braggots, some which require less gear and less investment of yourself, like our wampus cat braggot. You might check that out and check out our simplifying brew in a bag video where we go through a lot of the nomenclature, kind of demystify the process and give a real basic recipe for how to do brew in a bag your first time. So this recipe is a brew in a bag recipe. That means it is all grain, but you're gonna be doing everything for the mash and the boil, etc., in one single container, using a brewing bag to infuse your water with your grains and then remove the grains in time for your boil. So everything's happening in the same container. Then all of that moves into a fermentation bucket and fermentation proceeds as usual. This whole recipe was designed around accentuating, highlighting, and elevating the aromatics and flavor profile of orange blossom honey, that nice, zesty, citrusy, but very floral and kind of decadent honey. Orange blossom honey is also really accessible. You can usually find it at your local grocery store, but I recommend the brand you're gonna see here. This is not a paid advertisement. I've just found that McCoy's Orange Blossom Honey is really excellent. It's relatively affordable in one gallon quantities, and I really like it in this recipe. So, for this Orange Blossom Honey themed braggot, let's take a look at our ingredients. The ingredients for our Ozark Howler braggot are five pounds of two row, one and a half pounds of Munich light German, one and a half pounds of white wheat, 12 ounces of honey malt, 12 ounces of carapils, half an ounce of Amarillo hops, one ounce of Mandarina Bavaria hops, three pounds of orange blossom honey, and Kvaik Voss ale yeast. We'll also be priming with either five ounces of honey or four and a half ounces of corn sugar, or of course, kegging. So now that you know what these ingredients are, let's take a look at why they were chosen. I think it will be interesting to break down this beer recipe part by part to show you how it all came together. And this is the fifth time that I brewed it that you're seeing in this video. This has been brewed five times and went through quite a process of refining the ABV, the grain bill, the hops profile, and the mash temperature to make sure that this kind of comes out exactly how I wanted for my palate. At the end of this video, I'll make some recommendations on how you might alter the recipe to fit your beer palate. So two row, it's a base malt. It's there to provide alcohol, obviously, and to provide that very kind of neutral maltiness that is characteristic to beer. Munich. This one's in here to provide some enhanced sweetness. White wheat. This is in there to provide just a little bit of an essence of fruitiness. Wheat beers tend to have a little bit of a fruity character hanging out in the back of the palate. And I wanted to make sure we had just a little bit of that in here to kind of back up and bolster those orange blossom notes. Honey malt. This is here to provide some honey flavor. Just again, a little backbone for the honey in here. And honey malt also does provide some added sweetness as well. Carapils. This is a little bit controversial among beer brewers these days. Carapils is said to enhance head retention. Now, I've seen the debates on this. I don't know where I fall on it, other than my lived experience seems to indicate that it works okay. And carapils doesn't provide any flavor. so. I just throw it in here as a matter of course. Maybe you could leave it out. Amarillo and Mandarina Bavaria hops. Both of these provide some citrusy, orangey, pithy notes. They're both relatively accessible and I think both enhance the orange blossom honey as well. Orange blossom honey, of course, is there to provide orange blossom honey flavor. 
and Kvyk Voss. Kvyk obviously contributes some clout, but there are other advantages. It is a Kvyk strain that ferments very quickly and reliably, but at warmer temperatures, like once you start creeping into the 80s, maybe even low 90s, you start to get some esters that taste like oranges or orange peel or orange zest. And so again, it's there to amplify the orange blossom honey. And with that, all context out of the way, let's jump into our brew day. Our brew day begins by milling our grain. If you don't have a grain mill, of course you can have your local homebrew shop mill the grain for you. Milling our grain exposes more surface area of the grains and allows for a better starch conversion when we do our mash. For this brew, I hooked my power drill up to my malt muncher to mill up these grains. This thing also comes with a handle, which you've probably seen me use in the past, but this is the <laughs> quick and painless way of doing that. We're going to be brewing this brew in a bag, so our strike water is 7 gallons. And then we'll turn that on and we are shooting for a strike temperature of 164 degrees Fahrenheit. This is slightly on the higher end of strike temperatures because we are looking for a slightly higher mash temperature. You see here I overshot by one degree, but by the time I get my grains in there, it will probably have dropped to 164. So cut the heat, grab our grain bag, and start dunking it in just like you would a tea bag. We want to make sure that water is flowing all throughout that bag. And we'll open it up and stir around just to make sure we don't have any clumps or dough balls in the bottom of there that will decrease our efficiency. Then we'll tuck that grain bag off to the side and cover that and we're going to mash this for one hour. Lid goes on. And about a half an hour later, we'll go ahead and open that up and give it another stir just to make sure we've got good free flowing liquid throughout that bag. Just adjusting my clamps here and baby most made sure to help supervise as I stirred up our mash. Lid goes back on and we'll wait out that last 30 minutes. Then we pull our bag and we're going to drain and press the bag to get as much liquid out as we can. Now some of your liquid will be soaked up by that grain and you're just never going to get it back. That's why we start with more water than what we intend to end up with by the time we get to our boil. So we started out with 7 gallons of water, the grain absorbed a little over a gallon of water, and then by the time our boil is done, we'll be down to about 5.5 gallons of water wort. So now that we have our mash done, let's get going with our boil. Often beer recipes will do a one hour boil and you're doing some hops additions staggered throughout that one hour boil to achieve different things from the different hops that you add. And sometimes beer boils will go even longer. I've even done one up to 90 minutes. But for this recipe, I started out my first few brews doing 30 minute boils and decided to pare that down to a 15 minute boil. So your boil goes really quick on this beer. And that is advantageous because it's hella convenient to only boil for 15 minutes and then be chilling your work back down. But you are stacking a lot of things all at once in that 15 minutes. So that way from start to finish, everything goes off without a hitch. And you'll see that here and you can do it. I believe in you. You want to bring that up to a nice gentle rolling boil. You don't necessarily need this just blowing off a big aggressive boil because you will boil off a little bit more of your volume that way. And we're just doing a 15 minute boil here. So we're going to go ahead and get our wort chiller inside there and let it come back up to a rolling boil. This will help sanitize our wort chiller. And at that same time, we're going to get our hop spider in there because we're going to be doing some hops additions here during the boil. We start out by throwing in a whirl flock tablet that will help make sure this thing clears up a little bit even in the kettle and our hops go in. This is all of our hops right in at the beginning of that 15 minute boil. 
We've got Amarillo and Mandarina Bavaria. These are some nice citrusy and fruity hops that will help accentuate the orange blossom honey that we're gonna add in here, as well as be accentuated by the Kivike Voss Ale Yeast, which provides some orange zest kind of characteristics in its ester profile. After 15 minutes, we kill the heat, pull our hop spider out and get that drained. We wanna make sure we get all the liquid drained out of there. Then just discard those hops and get a whirlpool going so we can add our honey here at Flame Out. When adding your honey, it is important to make sure that the liquid is moving, that the burner is off, and it really helps for your honey to be warmed prior to adding it. I did this by putting my jug of honey into a hot water bath as I started my brew day, so it was nice and liquidy by the time I got to flame out. You don't wanna scorch the honey because obviously that's gonna add some burnt characters, burnt notes to this beer. So you wanna make sure that everything's moving, everything's warm, so when the honey hits that beer as it's swirling around, it's mixing throughout and not sinking straight to the bottom and burning on the bottom of your hot brew kettle. With that wort moving gently in a whirlpool, we will add our warmed orange blossom honey. This is three pounds of delicious, delicious Florida orange blossom honey. You wanna use a really good orange blossom honey for this. Something with some big, bold flavors and aromatics that will stand up against the other stuff, the hops and the malt in here, because you don't want it to get lost in the beery part of this braggot. Once the honey's in, give it another stir, stir, stir to get that whirlpool going again. That way the honey mixes throughout and some of those solids that have sunk to the bottom will kind of coalesce into a little clump in the bottom of our brew kettle. And then we get that wort chiller going. And once that drops to about 90 degrees, we're gonna open the flow into a sanitized hose and get that into our brew bucket. I'm gonna jump in here real quick with a reminder that you wanna make sure that any gear that is gonna to touch your beer after the boil is sanitized. Use a no rinse sanitizer like Starzan, that's what I use. Just make sure everything is sanitized. Everything that touched it prior to and during the boil was subject to some sanitization just by fact of the temperature. But now, after the boil, it's really crucial that you maintain really good sanitization practices so your beer doesn't get infected. After everything's transferred off, we'll add our yeast. And I'm just sprinkling the dried Kivik Voss right on top of our wort here. Cover that and we'll get it into the brew room. Then we'll fit it with an airlock and let it ride. In my experience, this takes about a week and a half to ferment out completely. So I ended up fermenting this one indoors, but those of you who follow the channel and our social media know that I love to do fermentations outdoors, also especially in the Oklahoma heat. For this beer in your fermentation bucket, you could stick that outside in some warm weather or put it on a germination mat, like for germinating seeds, and keep that fermentation temperature nice and warm like in the 80s to maybe low 90s, and you'll get more of those orangey esters out of Kivik Voss. However, this Kivik strain does work really well at room temperatures. That's what I chose to do with this one. I fermented it indoors at an ambient temperature of around 72 to 73 degrees during fermentation. And this works just great. Starting gravity there is 1.049. And my final gravity was 1.004. You may notice if you are primarily a mead or a winemaker that I added no nutrients. No newts, no newts. I added no nutrients to this because it doesn't really need any. Now you could add a little bit of fermato, maybe up to 10 grams front loaded when you pitch your yeast. That would be fine and that would probably help things along. But there's plenty of nitrogen in here, at least in my experience to get a nice clean and quick fermentation without any stalls. And that comes from all that grain that we used. No newts, no newts. We're going to prime this with honey. So we have five ounces of honey and we're gonna add roughly equal part by weight of water to that honey to make it less of a solid and more of a syrup. 
pop that into the microwave to get it warmed up and then we let it cool close to kind of room temperature. This priming sugar will allow it to carbonate in the bottles, so we have a nice sparkling carbonated braggot to enjoy. Now if you were using a bucket, you wouldn't really need to wait for your priming sugar to cool down, but I'm going to be bottling this out of a carboy because that's what I had ready and on hand that day. So my priming sugars, my honey water here, goes into the bottom of the carboy, and then I just did a clean rack on top of that to mix the priming sugar equally throughout the entire batch and get it off of some of the muck at the bottom of our fermentation bucket. And then we just bottle away. And this made about a case of Ozark Howler Braggot, half of which I gave to my friend David to enjoy this summer. You're welcome, David. And now, a tasting. This is one of my favorite recipes I've done probably in like the last three years. Really, I guess since the channel started focusing on recipe development a lot of the time, I got to talk to several expert beer makers about how they might make this beer and kind of figure out what works for me, for my palate, but also what I really feel like works for orange blossom honey, working with a very specific varietal of honey to make a beer around that varietal. So let's get in here. It smells like orange blossom honey on the nose. Just big citrusy sweet notes on the nose. Really lovely. Again, right on top at that off-gassing CO2 coming out of the top of the head. It smells like orange blossom honey. That like just classic, classic character of orange blossom honey. If I didn't know this was a beer and somebody just handed it to me, I might even guess that this is an orange blossom hydromel just by the aromatics. The malt character on the nose is relatively faint. It's got that nice zing to it. The first few times I made this, it was overly hopped. And at one point I felt like there was just too much honey character. Like it wasn't playing well with the malt and the hops. It was really about finding that balance where you pick up a little bit of hops, you pick up a little bit of orange blossom honey, and you get that nice backbone of maltiness that kind of supports it all. And also because we used Kvikvoss in here, we get some of those tangy, zesty notes that are the esters from the yeast. And I think it's so cool when you can get a yeast to really express those things that are characteristic to the strain and then use them to your advantage when making the beer. So right up front, it's light. There's not a crazy amount of malt body in here. It's it drinks very much like a lighter beer, but you get orange blossom notes and zesty notes and just a little bit of a tingle across the front of your tongue. And then as it washes down, there's a little bit of a juiciness, nice kind of light malty finish and a relatively subtle sweetness on the back end. This beer is very well balanced, and that was kind of my whole goal in developing this recipe, was to balance a beer around orange blossom honey. But I could see how some folks might want to unbalance it just a little bit. You know, you may not want it to have as much sweetness. And in that case, you might dial back the Munich by a half a pound, and maybe even the honey malt, cut some of that sweetness. Or if you like that character, but don't want so much sweetness, you might just adjust down your mash temperature and mash it at like 150, 151, instead of 154 or 155, like we did here in this video. That could help dry it out a little bit more. Or if you want some more of that honey character, that big orange blossom character, consider adding another pound of orange blossom honey. So four pounds instead of three. This will do two things. It will help dry the beer out just a little bit more. So it will cut some of that sweetness a little bit. And you're gonna have a little bit of the extra orange blossom character in there as well. 
there are definitely ways you can play with this recipe to kind of match it to your palate. I do think that the way we present it here in this video, after all of my research on this project, this is the way I think that would be the biggest crowd pleaser. And honestly, if you just want to brew it by the book, but give it a little bit of extra zhuzh, you might just put a little wedge of orange on the edge of your glass, maybe squeeze it and drop it into the beer to give it just a little bit more character. As I said, this is one of my favorite recipes that I have created in my time doing the channel. I'm really pleased with how it came out. And of course, if you riff on this recipe, I wanna hear your feedback. Leave a comment on this video or send me an email. Let me know what you did to suit this recipe to your palate. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button on the video and subscribe to the channel. Ring that bell for notifications so you don't miss our future content. And if you wanna join our community, we've got a Discord server where you can make a bunch of new brewing friends. Until next time, happy brewing. Enjoy your delicious braggots. Stay safe and cheers. <laughs>